Hello friends, it is Wednesday, February 28th, and I just wanted to check in because I want to let you know I still have one drain left and I reached out to my plastic surgeon today to ask like if I could have it taken out this week and they're squeezing me in tomorrow morning to have it removed. So it's not really putting anything out. I have this cool pocket on my pants. So it just kind of like hangs out there. <laughs> but there's really like, I'll show it to you real quick. There's like, this is from, when did I empty it? Last night at like 7 p.m. That's it. It's time to come out. Plus, I'm tired of having to deal with it. So I am getting ready to go take a shower, milk my drain one more time, and then that should be it until tomorrow when it gets taken out. So yeah, and the reason why I also haven't been recording too, too much in the last like four or five days is because my daughter started school super late into the year because I had to pull her out for chemo and all that stuff. She was supposed to start school and I pulled her out because of chemo and the risk of getting sick and all that fun stuff. But they were able to squeeze her in for the rest of the school year now that I'm all done chemo and I'm done my surgery, so yay. So I will check in tomorrow when I am heading to the plastic surgeon appointment to hopefully have my last drain removed and then I can finally like close that up. Oh, I'll show you real quick. The hole on the other side is right there. And it is pretty much just like a little scabby right now. There's no hole. So yay, I don't even need a bandit anymore. All right, I will see you in the next clip. Good morning, friends. It is Thursday, February 29th. And today is the day that I officially, hopefully, probably will be having my last drain removed from surgery. So yeah, I just wanted to check in with you on that. I just, I didn't empty it because there's really honestly like nothing coming out of it anymore. Like barely at all. The last time I emptied it was yesterday at 7 p.m. I think, and that was it. We're over 14 hours now, I think. It's time. <laughs> and I keep getting it like tangled on things because I'm just over it. It's like having to deal with it for a week or so is okay, but we're on like two weeks and a day now. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready to get this out. Cause even like driving in a car, if I fasten the seatbelt, it's like right there. And I'm just, if I get up too quick, I'm like, oh, it's pulling. Like I just, I just want it out. <laughs> but I, mean, I don't really like need it anymore. It served its purpose and it's time to move on. But um, I'm going to take you along with me to my doctor appointment today. Um, it's just like, I guess like another quick little follow up to check my incisions, which look beautiful and they're healing beautifully, I should say, and remove the drain. And I guess that's it for now. I don't, this is the plastic surgeon that I'm going to today. And I don't go back to her until after radiation, when I can like discuss the reconstruction part of my journey if I decide to reconstruct because I'll be honest right now it's kind of nice not having boobs uh, a lot of things fit better <laughs> um they're not in the way they're not heavy they're not hurting my back sleeping is great and um oddly enough and I noticed this yesterday I can still feel I'm going to say like half of my breast like the bottom half that was removed I don't feel too much of that. I can feel my ribs, like where my skin meets the bottom of where my breast came out of my rib area. Um, I can feel all the way up to that, like basically all the way up to the incision. I can feel the incision. Um, and it's like the bottom half of my breast is numb, but the whole top half I can feel, which is pretty cool because some women lose 100% sensation throughout the entire breast on both of them. And that's not the case for me, which is kind of odd, but cool. I'll take it. And um, uh, the numbness in my arm, definitely my armpit is still numb. It feels like there's a rolled up towel, like in between here and here, or there and there. So when I put my arm down, it feels like there's like an object in there, but it's not, I'm just numb. <laughs> but I have to say doing stretches daily, and um, stimulating the area by massaging it, 100% I think is working. Like it's gonna take a long time. Like it could take up to a year until I feel full sensation again. And I may never get sensation back in my actual armpit, 
but uh, like where deodorant is applied, I may never feel that again, which is, it is what it is. Um, but it's kind of cool that our body can rebuild after such trauma and severing of so many tiny little blood vessels and nerve endings and all that. It's just amazing. Like one cool thing about this journey, or there's a lot of cool things about this journey that I've learned and people I've met, but one more thing to add to, I guess, the wind bank is I'm learning a lot about the human body and how amazing our bodies are and how our body really, truly, all its, its only job is to keep us alive. And mine does a really good job of that. And you just got to give our bodies more praise than we give it. We don't think about it. Like, just wake up and tell your body you love it and be grateful for it and thank it for keeping you alive. I never, in, before cancer, I never thought to do that. Um, <clears throat> the only time I ever thought to do that was if I was like deathly ill or had like strep throat or something or a really wicked ear infection. And I was like, oh, this sucks. Like the pain and suffering of that. But you're like, oh, thank God my body's better. Like, that's like the only time I was like appreciative. Like, oh, thank God I feel better. But no, we need to thank our bodies for keeping us healthy, keeping us alive and um, fighting off disease, fighting off infection and rebuilding after trauma. It's so cool. All right, I'm rambling and I will see you in the next clip. All right, I'm on my way now to my plastic surgeon I guess the second post-op follow-up visit and to hopefully get my drain removed. So prayers and positivity. I will see you in the next clip. surgeon to come in and take my drain out room tour oh, i got cherry blossoms again so this room probably looks familiar to you it's not that exciting but all right i'm gonna wait for the surgeon to come in and check my drain and hopefully take it out see you in the next clip Out. I'm excited. I'm happy and I am a free woman. <laughs> ha! I cannot tell you how good it feels to not have my Christmas ornaments dangling off of me anymore. Well, I only had one for the last week, but I am so happy <laughs> that it's out of here. I do follow up one week from today to just double check and make sure that there's no fluid pooling in anywhere around where the drain used to be, just to make sure there's no buildup. Um, if there is, they said they can go in with like a real fine needle and pull out the fluid, but it should be okay. Cause the left side didn't do that when they took it out. But yay, what a good day. The sun is shining. I'm happy. It's a beautiful day. It was really cold this morning, but it's starting to warm up a little bit. It's just a good day today. It's a good day every day, but well, almost every day. We do have bad days, but yeah, I'm really happy. I feel good. I'm not allowed to shower for 24 hours because it is an open wound. Um, it didn't hurt at all when they took it out. And um, it's just so weird that you can have this like 12 inch long. It's long. I was like, I can't believe that much was inside my breast. It was literally, here, I'm going to hold up a folder. The length of this folder, like not the long part, 
but the top like the eight and a half part or maybe this is nine um that's about how long it was inside my body <laughs> i was like i didn't know all that could even fit in there but that's cool and um it did its job and i'm very grateful for it and i'm also very grateful that it's out of my body now all right so i'm gonna head home get some work done and then go pick up my little one from school so i will check in with you later next week is um actually no tomorrow i meet with the radiation oncologist so i will check in with you tomorrow to let you know how that goes and then next week is a busy week i have an appointment with my breast surgeon to follow up and go over pathology hopefully if it's ready because it should have been ready by now and it's not um i know no news is good news but it's also like let's go guys it's been two weeks and a day get my results back about where the cancer is in my lymph nodes or not um where it is not i should say and then um wednesday i meet with my oncologist which is my chemo doctor and now thursday is a follow-up from today's visit so i have a busy week ahead next week all right i will see you in the next clip good morning friends it is friday march 1st and i am going this morning to meet with my radiation oncologist to discuss my radiation treatment plan so i'll check in with you from the car probably or I, I might check in after the like at the appointment because there's not really much to talk about <laughs> I don't really know what to expect I've never been to an appointment like this before I actually didn't even know what to wear because I'm like do I strip down sorry that noise is my cure egg and it's like on its last cure leg and <laughs> I need to get a new one it's like growling at me when I make coffee you hear that all right, it's time to get a new one of those. Put that in the uh, to-do list. Um, but I wasn't sure what to wear because I'm like, do I strip down for this appointment? Because <laughs> you know when you see, obviously, a breast surgeon, they need to look at your breast to, like, see what's going on and give you all your options and feel your tumor and all that stuff. Same with your oncologist. So now that all that's removed, do they need to, like, look at anything? probably maybe have to see like where to put the it's like a tattoo i think it's a permanent tattoo to show where the machine needs to line up the lasers and just go on that exact spot where the cancer was so anyway i was like i just because i have like my wig on and stuff like i didn't want to have to be like pulling things over my head but i just wore t-shirts i didn't know what to wear um i'm like i don't even know if they need to look at me but they probably do so all right, I'll let you know. I'm going to head out to my appointment in a couple minutes, and I'll check in with you in the next clip. Hello, I am in the car, and I just had a quick thought. Not related to a radiation oncologist appointment, but I'm not allowed to lift over five pounds for, what are we at, week two-ish and a half, so like four more weeks. But my car door, in my opinion, is way more than five pounds of pressure when I'm trying to pull it closed. So it confuses me as to why we are cleared. I'm out of breath because I just took the trash cans back and I was like running because I'm kind of almost late for my appointment. <laughs> so why am I recording, right? Maybe be more late. No, I'm just wondering like, why would somebody be cleared to drive um, and all like the mechanisms and movements of driving um, after surgery, but we can't lift more than five pounds. Like my dog, I have a Yorkie and he's like around like 12 pounds like 11 or 12 pounds i'm like i can't even pick him up but i can open and close this heavy honking car door <laughs> it just doesn't make sense like i don't i don't know whatever um so i just do it slowly but i just had that thought and i want to know what are your thoughts like do, let me know down below in the comments do you agree like is that weird like i can't pick up five pounds but i can do all this other stuff that i in my opinion would stress out my stitches more than picking up like a 10 pound 11 pound 12 pound whatever he weighs yorkie just a little food for thought all right let's get going to my appointment
for the radiation oncologist to come in and talk about radiation. So I'll let you know how it goes, but first let's do a room tour real quick. And there's the chair. And me. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in the next clip. Okay, so what a day. Um, so when I left my radiation oncology appointment, they recommended that I get, you know, physical therapy, at least for like the lymphedema massage for my axillary. Um, and conveniently, there's a physical therapy location in the same parking lot of where I go for this appointment today. So I go over there, long story short, they don't have an appointment available for a consult for physical therapy until the 19th of March, which is like about three-ish weeks out. What sucks about that is I'm gonna be starting radiation around that time. And I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99% sure that the doctor I saw today was saying, you don't wanna do physical therapy with radiation. Like do it before and then do it after because your skin's gonna be pretty like sensitive from getting radiation. Um, so, or they might be like limited on what they can do as far as like the lymphedema massages and um, like stretching and stuff because the skin will be sore from radiation. It is so bright in this parking lot. That's why I keep looking around because my eyes get so sensitive. But anyway, um, so I basically just added on an extra half hour of my day and my time right now to find out that I couldn't even schedule an appointment anyway. So they're sending me to another location that might have better availability, but I'm just gonna wait until Monday to talk to my breast surgeon who can also like get a little bit further into detail about what to do about physical therapy because um, I have four appointments, four doctor appointments next week. Monday is the breast surgeon. Wednesday is oncologist, the my chemo doctor for follow-up. Um, Thursday is plastic surgery follow-up to make sure there's no pooling of liquid, just to check me real quick, um, where my drain was removed yesterday. And then Friday is a follow-up to who I met today, but at a different location to discuss the planning of my radiation. So it's six weeks. They determined it's definitely gonna be six weeks, Monday to Friday. And I asked, why are the weekends never booked? Like, does cancer not grow on the weekend? And she said, it's not that. It's to give the patient's skin a break. Like, in between five continuous rounds, take a break. Five more rounds, take a break. That makes sense. So now we got our answer. Because <laughs> I was like, what? What is up with that? But anyway, now we know. Um, I also wanted to tell you that I got my... Um, surgery lymph node removal update today and how many were removed way more than I anticipated way more like five times the amount um they removed my breast surgeon who I'm going to see on Monday he'll he'll confirm this too but he removed 22 lymph nodes out of my right axillary armpit eight of those were positive for cancer which sucks. I thought I only had two positive for cancer this whole time. Um, but the good thing is it's less than half were positive for cancer. So 12 were negative, eight were, po no, 14 were negative and eight were positive. So there were more negatives than positives, which is a good thing. And all of it's removed. So that's an even better thing. But holy cow, I did not know I had eight lymph nodes positive for cancer. And you wanna hear something crazy? And I'm gonna tell you this because if this is happening to you right now and you're like, what's this lump? Go get checked. Um, I recall around February-ish of last year, one of my underwires in my bra, you know, they always pop, poke out up near the armpit and stab you to death. Um, that happened and then like a day or two later I had a lump in my armpit and I was like geez that underwire really did some damage it was like sore for a couple days had I known anything about breast cancer awareness like more than just like seeing pink ribbons in October 
um, had I known that like what to look out for, I should have gotten that checked in February of last year because it did eventually go away. It was only like puffed out, but it was a legit, it felt like a jelly bean was on my skin for probably like two or three days. And then it like receded back. And then <clears throat> fast forward to a couple months later is when I found the lump in my breast and that started this whole journey. But that makes me wonder since there were eight positive lymph nodes, even after chemo, uh, positive for cancer, did I have it already in my lymph nodes back in like a year ago? And like, I don't know, did it start with that one that was sticking out and then slowly spread like, March, April, May, June, July, when I found out, hey, I have this lump. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's crazy. Like how, like you thinking, looking back, I'm like, wow, I never would have thought that was all like something so serious. And it, I thought it was just my underwire irritating my lymph nodes in my armpit. I didn't even know we had lymph nodes in our armpit. That's why I remember looking it up uh, when it happened, because I'm like, why do I have this lump? What is this? And it did say it could have been breast cancer, but I was like, well, my underwire just poked it. So it's probably just angry. So if you have that happen with or without an underwire poking you and you get a lump ever, even if it was an underwire induced lump, go get that lump scanned. The earlier, the better, because I had no idea. I had eight positive lymph nodes after chemo so that might have been more and the chemo killed a lot of it scary scary stuff man so always you're your best advocate always get yourself checked if you're not sure don't google it and just trust google because that's what i did and <laughs> look at my outcome uh i ended up with full-blown breast cancer i mean i would have had cancer anyway but at least i would have been able to tackle it earlier early detection is key to survival so and you are your best advocate so as soon as you feel something that doesn't feel normal please promise me that you're going to go get checked, go get scanned, go get screened, whatever you got to do, get your, get whatever you need and go take care of that. So you can live till 105 with me. All right. I'll see you in the next clip. I'm heading home. I'm hungry and I need more coffee. So I'll see you in the next clip. Hello everyone. It is Monday morning and I am getting ready to head out to my post-surgical follow-up visit with my breast surgeon. This is the doctor and surgeon who removed all the cancer and the lymph nodes in my axillary. And we're going to discuss probably like the whole port spill again or non-spill because it wasn't anything. It wasn't even a bacteria. So we'll talk about that, I'm sure. He said he was so dumbfounded. He's like, I've never had this happen in my entire history of doing surgeries. He's like, I've removed infected ports before. Yours looked nothing like an infected port, but there was this sac and he's like, I'm just dumbfounded that it wasn't an infection. I don't know what that was, but thankfully it wasn't an infection. Anyway, he's also probably going to go over the pathology results from surgery to discuss my tumor that was removed or tumors because I had three of them, little ones. And um, maybe there was more in there that we didn't know about. I don't know. We'll find out together. Also, he'll discuss the um pathology for the lymph nodes i already know because of friday's visit with the radi radiation oncologist that 22 were removed eight were positive for cancer and 12 were negative so it looks like he got a clear margin hopefully um, and i'm also going to talk to him about a couple questions i have about the healing process of surgery because i noticed like on the side of my right breast that the skin is like and just in one little like one inch area, it's like kind of like wrinkly if I move my arm a certain way. And I'm wondering if it's just thin because sometimes, you know, they try to get as close to the surface as possible, but you do have to leave some tissue behind or the skin will die. So I just worry about if I re-expand that, am I going to split my skin? Mm, I don't know. I don't know how it all works, but we're going to find out together. Um, I also want to talk to him about that same spot because I noticed when I feel my left breast area, it's like nice and soft and squishy when I touch it. The right side's kind of firm. Like it feels like I'm flexing, but only on like half of my breast, like over towards my armpit area, like in here. It feels like hard, firm. I don't know. It feels like so gross. Like it feels like the exact consistency of raw chicken breast. Like it's like 
squishy but firm like a muscle but i know it's not muscle because that was all tissue and fat so i don't know we're gonna find out together and i'm gonna head out now so i will see you in the next clip to come in but i just want to do a little room tour because i always do room tours all right so here here we go it's so exciting and then here's the window and here is a pretty photo of some rocks on the beach that scared me <laughs> i don't know what that was um all right so we're just gonna wait for the doctor to come in for the surgeon here's my cool gown all right see you in the next clip I will check in from the car. Lots to update. Well, I'm home because I got some kind of upsetting news at the doctor today. So I'll tell you the good news first. Um, according to Pathology, the tumor in my right breast um responded really well to chemo it shrunk pretty significantly so they're 100 percent confident that the cancer was removed out of my breast um unfortunately my lymph nodes did not really respond well if at all to chemotherapy so um of the 22 that were removed 13 of them were positive for cancer. Of the 13 that were positive for cancer, eight of them were tumor. Sorry, I'm crying. I'm just, it's all hitting me right now. Eight of them were, um, like positive for cancer tumor, and five were positive for microscopic cancer cells so um they didn't form a tumor yet but what sucks is um because of this i have to um be put on a chemo like an oral chemo i thought i was all done with chemo and i'm not i go wednesday to um meet with my oncologist to discuss this further and also talk about the anti-estrogen pill that I will be on for however long. Five years, ten years, two years, a year, I don't know. But I'm also, um, I have to go get a, a PET scan, PET scan, of my whole body. Because he just wants to make sure that cancer did not spread anywhere else in my body since my lymph nodes did not respond to chemo it's scary because there's a chance that it spread so 
Um, oh, and I'm being sent for physical therapy too, just so my arm can get like full range of motion back because it's like, in my opinion, like at like a 90%, like it's almost back, but, um, it's not a hundred percent. So I don't know. That's pretty much the update for now. I'm not going to make this long because I have a lot of appointments ahead of me this week. So I'll just keep checking in as I go. And plus this just happened. So I'm it's pretty raw and real right now and I just need to feel my feelings for a little bit. So I'll see you in the next clip.